time. James is not able to join us this morning, so it'll just be me. Um, I also want to let everyone know uh, that we'll be moving this, um, what used to be, I think we originally we had it once weekly and then we had it bi-weekly. Um, and so we're going to move it to once monthly, um, unless something urgent pops up. Uh, since we have a lot of virtual programming uh, going on with, in particular, with our shared uh, services programming. Um, and so if you're not familiar with that, Arts Build uh, launched that last year. And uh, that is um, uh, resources that we're providing, um, such as um, legal assistance, human resource, healthcare, um, back office, and other tra training tools um, that we're offering to the local arts sector. So if you haven't checked uh, that out, um, our next shared services programming uh, program is happening next Thursday, and it'll be um, on building your online presence. And so all of that information is available uh, on our Facebook page. Um, we'll also be hosting our last arts vote um, mayoral candidate discussion this afternoon at noon, um, and that will be featuring Ryan Love, uh, so you can also find that on our Facebook page as well. And um, one last quick announcement. Um, we will be hopefully next week um, announcing our first round of grantees for the Artists Work Grant Program. Uh, and then we'll also be hosting a lunch hour discussion info session uh, for the next um, for the next upcoming round uh, that will be due, uh, the application for that will be February 26th. Uh, so if you are interested in applying for that uh, the artist work program, um, I would encourage you to attend. We have made some changes uh, since the last round. Uh, so I will be sending that information shortly. And if anyone um, would like to share um, at one of our upcoming meetings uh, or ha has any suggestions or requests for meeting topics, please feel free to, to reach out uh, to me or anyone else at Arts Build. Uh, we're always open um, and willing to facilitate um, presentations or discussions that are as you know relevant as we can make them to uh, the community. Um, Oh, Monica just reminded me, we have another arts vote actually next Tuesday at 12. So it's not, this one, this one is not the last one. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. And so now I'd like to shift gears and introduce our uh, lovely speakers today. Uh, so we'll be hearing from uh, both Bree Forsman and Jack Murphy, who are both with Network for the Goods Impact and Sustainability team. Um, and they'll be sharing with us uh, today about their Jumpstart uh, Capacity Building Program. So I'm gonna hand it over to them um, and we'll have time for questions at the end as well. Thank you so much, Miriam. I, I, I did want to, you know, take the time to thank Miriam and James for having us come speak this morning. We're so excited to be meeting each of you. Um, I'm going to give it over to Jack, who is our Director of Community Impact. Um, he's going to tell us a little more about this Jumpstart Capacity Building Program. And if y'all have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out um, in the chat. We're happy to help in any way we can. Thanks, Bri, and, and to echo that, uh, thanks so much to Miriam and the Arts Build team for having us uh, today. And good morning, all. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be with y'all. Uh, I hope that your year has gotten off to a good start, relatively speaking. Uh, these are uh, devastating and strange times, but I hope that everyone is finding reasons to smile. Um, today, uh, well, first, uh, like Bree said, my name is Jack. I'm the Director of Community Impact at Network for Good. And um, mine and Bree's team here at Network for Good we uh, are just so thrilled to be here and to be talking to you about our, uh, our Jumpstart Capacity Building Program here at Network for Good. Um, in short, in very brief, Jumpstart is a 12-month uh, fundraising capacity building program that blends together several different forms of fundraising support. Um, and with a narrow goal of helping you secure new donors and dollars uh, while reckoning with a limited time and budget to do so. Um, Jumpstart is about six years old and we've served over 3,500 nonprofits across the country through Jumpstart, largely in partnership with uh, over 120 grant-making foundations. So traditionally, Jumpstart is a grant-funded program. Um, 
today as it stands for, for those on the call. Um, we are very much in a, a listening and learning phase, a very exploratory phase to determine if there's a need and interest for this kind of program before the determining the scope of a rollout. Um, and with that in mind, um, let's uh, let's just talk briefly about uh, what Jumpstart's all about. Um, I'll several different pieces of fundraising support around a small but mighty team. Uh, this was designed for the, the small community-based nonprofit. Um, and the, uh, you know, the main goal, like I said, is to help you, uh, and for those on the call, um, you, know, you may be thinking to yourselves these days, well, we, we have had fundraising events get canceled. We've had to earn revenue streams and contracts suspended. Um, you know, lots of, um, you know, lots in flux in, in the fundraising landscape these days. And uh, Jumpstart is designed to help you accommodate and acclimate to a, you know, a very evolved fundraising landscape, um, providing you with professional services, coaching, um, technology, technical assistance to um, sort of give you an idea of what Jumpstart's all about. Um, like I said, it, it seeks to blend together multiple forms of tradi traditionally, historically, very fragmented forms of fundraising support. That's uh, what we had in mind when we built Jumpstart. It was how do we get uh, professional coaching, you know, one-on-one -on -one human support from a seasoned fundraising veteran, um, you know, technology, the vehicle with which to put strategy into action in real time, technical assistance, workshops, all these things are great, but historically fragmented in our sector. So Jumpstart sought to bring them all together and structure them as an investment model so that the cost onus is not on the nonprofit, but on a foundation partner instead. Um, so just to start with the coaching, uh, which is really the heart and soul of the program, um, our coaches come from a variety of backgrounds, cause areas served, regions served, um, you know, sizes of nonprofits and staffing structures that they've worked with. As such, we're in a pretty good position to be a, a matchmaker. We've been called the match.com for nonprofit fundraising experts. Um, and the, uh, the sort of common thread um, between all of them is they have about two decades on average of fundraising experience. Uh, and they all have a shared passion for helping small, emerging, and mid-sized, largely community-based organizations to build fundraising capacity. Part of our deep bench of talent includes uh, coaches that work um, have worked uh, with arts organizations and helped them scale throughout their career. Uh, and they're very adept at helping uh, over the past year, especially helping arts organizations make the case uh, case for support to their communities, especially as they've been overlooked for. Uh, for, for, for more front lines and in, in favor of more frontline support and sort of pandemic facing support. Um, so we're well positioned to help organizations of any cause area, but especially those in the arts and cultural um, uh, segment. And so the, the coaching, practically speaking, uh, they meet with you once every two weeks, just like this over Zoom. We were virtual long before the pandemic. So it was a, that was a relatively easy transition for us. And uh, in, in concert with the technology, which I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of details today, um, but in concert with the technology, they seek to help you rise to the occasion as individual giving is animated. So over the past year, we've, we've seen giving has been up. Um, we're still looking at the final data, but all signs point to it having been a record year of fundraising. Um, and so you need to be able to meet donors where they are using powerful online giving campaigns, uh, powerful communications tools, um, using an intuitive donor management system that helps you organize and segment and build out cultivation strategies with your donors and prospects, um, leveraging uh, tools like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, which some surely have tried, um, animating your best and most um, fervent advocates to go out and be fundraisers for you. Um, just an example here of uh, one such organization that used our peer-to-peer -peer tool uh, and the success that they had. Uh, and then, as I said, you know, communications tools uh, are you know so important these days and using different um, ways to engage community. On the left, you see an example of our text to give tool. On the right, I'm going to uh, click on this um, thank you video, which is a part of our video messaging tool um, that you can also leverage to engage with donors in a very intimate, um, very engaging way. Um, and so all of this is part of the Jumpstart program. Um, actually gonna click out of these and um, brief preface. So 
uh, once again, you know, peer to peer is how uh, we can enable our biggest advocates and supporters to go out and be fundraisers. Uh, I did a peer to peer campaign for Giving Tuesday for this organization, Latinos in Virginia Empowerment Center. And they used their tools uh, in Jumpstart to send this thank you video to all of their donors, uh, to all the donors who gave to my campaign. So this was uh, a thank you video that was sent to my friend, Trevor. Hi, Trevor. I'm Gabriella with the Latinos in Virginia Empowerment Center. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for donating to Jack Murphy's Giving Tuesday campaign for our organization. We know how passionate Jack is about creating opportunities for limited English proficient populations. And that's exactly what we do. Your donation will help Spanish speaking victims of violence and injustice in Virginia access culturally appropriate and linguistically specific services that will empower them to become happy, healthy, and self sufficient. Thanks for your generosity, and please feel free to contact us at any time. We would love to stay in touch with you. Have a great rest of your week. So, just a you know, quick flavor of one of the tools that are included as part of the Jumpstart program. Um, Donors can share this video once they get it, they can like it and comment on it. So uh, we've seen great engagement on this tool. Um, but back to, you know, more broadly speaking, uh, you know, blending together uh, video messaging, text to give, uh, an email builder, uh, donor management, peer to peer fundraising, uh, and a number of other sort of back office functionalities we find uh, helps nonprofits um, save time, um, better and understand and engage with their donors. Uh, and also uh, just make their fundraising more data driven. Uh, and part of the team that helps with that is our success team. So in addition to uh, direct one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching technology, um, the program also includes technical assistance, which um, you know, is available to call, email, or chat with in the system. Uh, so between our success managers who work with you at the onset of the program, our data specialists who likewise work with you at the beginning, uh, to get your data right, which, you know, for many, that's a huge, you know, first step in building fundraising capacity is just getting clean data um, and getting that data migrated into your new system. Um, that's, uh, that's where the data specialists sit. And then our support specialists are more generalists who can be reached throughout the year for help in building reports, campaigns, you know, any, anything that involves the technology. Um, so that's just a quick sort of, you know, very high level overview of Jumpstart. Coaching, technology, technical assistance, traditionally grant funded. Um, grant makers across the country uh, fund Jumpstart to help bolster the sustainability of their grantees, help them become more financially resilient, um, and uh, ultimately you know, raise more in, in unrestricted revenue. Um, so in terms of the results, we see that typically Jumpstart participants raise about 27% more in new revenue uh, during the year-long program. It is a, it's a 12-month program. Um, and that can come from a variety of different ways, using upgraded technology, uh, crafting new powerful messaging with your coach, um, you know, more specifically, uh, better board engagement, you know, virtual events, uh, building a major gifts pipeline, um, utilizing new communications tools. The path always looks different, but the, the results and the outcomes are always the same, which is more dollars raised from more individual donors. We found that when organizations are able to, you know, get a grant to participate in Jumpstart and uh, and you know get the coaching and all the other um, tools as part of the program, that the results can be really powerful. Um, so this is an example um, report. Uh, this is a report we actually delivered to Arts Memphis, a, a capacity builder in Memphis that supports art, arts organizations. Um, they, in partnership with a local private foundation, uh, supported four organizations uh, invested $25,000. And uh, those organizations then uh, turned around that support and inside of a year uh, raised just shy of 230,000 combined in net new revenue. So that's above and beyond what those organizations raised in the prior year, net new revenue on top of what they raised uh, uh, before Jumpstart. Uh, just some quick quotes here. We'll send out this deck and the recording and all that. Um, Maybe Miriam and her team can clip out the, the trolls coming in. I think Zoom allows you to, to remove those to like crop the video. Um, but either way, maybe some folks will enjoy revisiting that, that fun time we had about 10, 15 minutes ago. <laughs> um, but uh, I won't read out these quotes or anything. I'd rather um, you know, open up the floor to questions, but you can see some of your uh, peers who are on the other side of the state, I, I, I know, but um, nonetheless are you know, some great arts organizations that were supported by 
Arts Memphis to enroll in Jumpstart. Um, but at the end of the day, our, our goal is always to help you increase revenue while, you know, visit revisiting your costs. You know, now is a, a great time more than ever to revisit, you know, what are we spending on fundraising? What are we netting? Um, and where could we, you know, perhaps when we've done, you know, big in-person events in the past, diversify into smaller virtual events or smaller, you know, cultivation dinners, bring down costs in that sense. And overall, just decreasing risk. That's, that's our big goal with Jumpstart. Um, so in the way of next steps, um, first, you know, I'd love to hear questions if folks want to enter questions in the chat or just unmute themselves in a moment. Uh, we welcome that. Uh, Bree, my colleague, is making herself available. She'd love to meet with you if this is interesting to you. If you'd like to learn more, um, please meet with Bree. Uh, in terms of next steps, like I said, we are very much in a exploratory and listening and learning phase, but we want you to be a part of the discussion. Um, if this is interesting to you, if you'd like to be a part of our discussion as we seek to uh, potentially roll out Jumpstart in 2021, uh, please take 10 to 15 minutes uh, to complete the assessment that uh, is linked here, but we'll also send out via email. Um, and that assessment will just uh, ensure that your, um, your voice is part of the discussion. You can tell us a bit about uh, what, what's going well with fundraising, where the challenges are, um, and how Jumpstart might be able to, to fill gaps in your fundraising uh, apparatus. So I'll now turn it to anyone who has any questions for us, or maybe a, a, a new song to cap off the presentation. Thank you so much, Jack. We have a question in the chat box that um, says, if we already use Network for the Good, how does this change or affect things? Yeah, uh, well, hello, Anne. It's great to meet a member of the family, always. Um, thanks for that question. We, uh, we do, um, so uh, we do allow you to enroll in Jumpstart or uh, pursue grant funding to enroll in Jumpstart. Um, if you're already a member of the family, that's, um, it, would, it would be a bit of a, a traditional program, uh, but we've certainly done it many times. Um, part of the initial um, you know, starting point of the program is to help you, you know, ramp up with the technology and uh, begin to use it effectively. You'll start at sort of a bit of a higher rung on the ladder or you would start. Um, but that just means you can start working with your coach on strategy and more, you know, meaningful, uh, impactful fundraising work uh, that much sooner. Um, in fact, Arts Memphis just enrolled their second cohort in Jumpstart. They had four organizations come to us who uh, were not part of the Network for Good family before, so they were getting started with their technology, and three others who were using our technology prior, but wanted to be a part of the coaching and the workshops and things like that. So. Uh, they were able to get a, you know, a subsidy uh, from the from Arts Memphis to to pursue um, to be a part of Jumpstart. Hope that answers your question, Anne. You're so welcome. Zoom bombing. That's what I was thinking of. Thank you, Vincent. <laughs> Zoom bombing. <laughs> How does the platform work? Can you run the campaigns through your social media platforms? Thanks for that question, Catherine. So um, we, we don't have direct social media integration or social media analytics, um, nothing like that. But whenever you build a campaign through our system, it, uh, it generates a unique link that you can then put on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, your other platforms. Um, so you know, um, just like, you know, creating a, an Eventbrite page or something like that, you'll, you'll be able to put those links on all of your channels on email. Uh, we'll help it, we'll help you integrate it into your website, things like that. Uh, is that what you were after Catherine or was it something else? I see a thumbs up. Great. Anyone else? Any I, I do have one other question to top off on that. Sure. And um, so when we're running a campaign, you guys are collecting the data. Will what uh, access do we have to that dan data? Can we have the emails in a spreadsheet, for instance, so then we can go back and do follow ups down the road if we need? Um, how proprietary is the content and data that you collect? Great question. So to be very clear, part of uh, the Jumpstart program and sort of the brain of the operation is a donor management system. 
that we've built here at Network for Good. It's our proprietary platform. Um, this donor management system uh, is, you know, like I said, sort of the brain of the operation. Anytime a gift comes through a campaign that you create, anytime a ticket is purchased, anytime a um, one of your peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers secures a new gift from a friend or family member, all of that funnels back into the system so that um, you know you can go into individual contact records and see their giving history. Anytime that contact makes a gift, that gift gets populated in their contact record. Uh, and anytime a, a gift or a ticket is purchased, anything like that, you'll also set up automatic thank yous and tax receipts to be sent to that um, to that supporter. Um, so, and you know, the data always, of course, remains in your ownership. You know, your your system is is yours. Um, so that, did that answer your question around? So I, I guess just to top off on that too is, uh, so can you, um, do you have a report section, for instance, that let it, lets us download a spreadsheet so we can see those donors and, uh, and also reach out to them maybe on, on different, through social media or other different ways that we might wanna contact them. Or if we can, for instance, I might want uh, a donor to also check out my newsletter, which doesn't flow through this platform. But what um, are there mechanisms for that? Absolutely. So we do have an email builder. Are you using Mailchimp or Constant Contacts, something like that? I go right through Squarespace. Okay, got it. Uh, so we have an email builder baked into our system, which you know can be. It doesn't happen overnight, but it can be a very you know um, just efficient way to you know bring all your fundraising under one roof. Uh, would be to move from Squarespace to our email builder should you join Jumpstart. Um, that way you can, you know, use merge tags for uh, names and addresses. You can even reference their giving history in emails. Um, and so that, um, that, that's a pretty seamless integration. And remind me your first question um, beyond the emails. It's, it's basically about uh, who, who has the, do I have access to the data? is really what my main question is. The, you know, who the donors are, um, any information that they have, email addresses, uh, things like that. Absolutely. So why don't I just uh, show you very quickly what the donor management system looks like. This might help with some context. So, and you asked about reporting too. So you saw some screenshots, but I'll just quickly give you a tour. This is the command center. So the dashboard um, with different graphs and metrics and activity feed of Anytime someone gives, anytime a task is added, there's a task management tool. Anytime a, um, an email goes out. Um, and then with regards to reports, um, this is the report section. So the giving tab, um, you can easily set a filter, custom filters. So like everyone who gave last year greater than $500. And we can see all those folks who gave more than $500 when they gave um, some metrics and then you know any notes or rather uh, a list of folks who fall within that parameter. Um, in terms of access, the data is completely yours. You know, you have complete access to it and um, you can go through either the giving or contacts tab to get to your contact list. Um, if I wanna go to a specific contact, I can see her giving history, uh, any pledges she's committed to, tasks associated with her, communication, so emails she was sent. Another great you know, reason to use the email builder in the system is that you can keep track of you know, what folks have been delivered, what they're opening, what they're clicking on, relationships, groups that they're a part of. So you have a complete visibility into who your folks are on the individual level. And you can also use our tools to you know, pull data and reports that you need or your board needs uh, on, the, on the higher level. Thumbs up. Great, very good. Um, I did see another question come in. What difference? What differentiates your software compared to Razor's Edge? So I would say that Razor's Edge is uh, much more robust and feature rich than we are. We are, um, you know, sort of positioned as everything you need and nothing you don't. You don't, and we're priced accordingly. Um, after the grant funded period, Jumpstart participants have the option to continue using the software at a rate of two hundred dollars per month. Uh, flat rate, no upcharges, no hidden fees, nothing like that. Uh, Razor's Edge can often cost far more, um, but they have great tools and they have great features um, that, you know, very large, um, you know, very...
established organizations with large staffing sizes, um, they uh, that Razor's Edge is, is you know certainly more feature rich and more has more functionalities than we do. We we have again sort of everything you need and nothing you don't. Um, and then uh, Tara's question: Is there an integration with QuickBooks or any bookkeeping software? Uh, yes, Tara, we do integrate with QuickBooks Online. Um, we don't integrate with the QuickBooks desktop version, but QuickBooks Online, we have a, a seamless integration with. You're so welcome, Susan. Great questions, everyone. Anything else that I can address? Um, I'm curious, I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. If, uh, is this, if this is interesting to you or if you um, would like to keep learning more, um, I'd love to just see uh, folks raise their hands either just on video or using the emoji as I have here. Good, see some hands raised. Great, that's exciting. Very good. Um, Linda, great question. Can you explain further the grant funding? Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, we're very much in the sort of nascent listening and learning phase um, in pursuit of a grant funded rollout. Uh, your voice is, is needed. Um, that's why we built our assessment tool to give you the opportunity to share, you know, what's been going well with fundraising, what's been uh, challenging and, you know, challenges abundant these days. Um, and just, you know, tell us a bit more about how things are going. Um, that will give us, um, you know, more of an understanding of whether Jumpstart might be a good fit for you specifically, but also for the community at large. Um, we, you know, in Arts Build, of course, are looking to uh, bring data into the discussion and, uh, before we pursue any sort of rollout of the program. Um, so I, I hope that helps, um, Linda. I, I know uh, there's some ambiguity there, but um, my my best guidance or my hope is that uh, that you'll participate in the assessment to uh, to be a part of the discussion. And Miriam, feel free to uh, add anything onto that. Yeah, um, I, it's kind of an echo of what you just said. It's it's something we're still exploring, um, and we kind of just need to wait and uh, gauge the interest um, of everyone in the community and see um, whether or not we can um, pursue something that our, Arts Build might be able to support. Thanks, Miriam. Well, again, really great questions all, and thanks so much for your active listening and for having us today. Um, I assume there's more agenda items to get to and that um, maybe maybe another Guns N' Roses song to get to so I can go ahead and, and cap off. <laughs> 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 Thank you so mind. much. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us, uh, Jack and Bree. Um, and I appreciate you uh, coming and sharing this uh, great platform. And uh, when I send the follow-up email, I will uh, send their slides along with a link to their assessment. Um, so please um, be sure to keep an eye out for that and be sure to reach out to them as well if you're interested and um, let us also know at Arts Build um, and we'll see um, how we can move along with this. Uh, so with that, I will um, open up the floor if anyone has any um, exciting um, announcements or anything they'd like to share. Um, we still have half hour, but I think we'll probably end early if you know, if anyone wants to share any, anything, any programming that's coming up, um, any New Year's resolutions that you're hoping to get into. <laughs> Feel free to just hop in. I'll hop in. Hi, my name is Linda Allen and I'm with the Houston Museum of Decorative Arts. And uh, through the pandemic, we've been pulling our hair out, but we're going to have our 47th annual antique show and sale. It's one of our primary fundraisers. So, of course, we're kind of biting our nails and worried about it, but we just wanted everybody to know that, uh, you know, it helps keep the museum doors open. So uh, keep your eyes out on the social media events to learn more about it. It's uh, the last month of February, and uh, we're going to have social distancing, kind of like the Chattanooga, Chattanooga Market and elsewhere. So wish us luck <laughs> and hope you can come. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, this, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, just wanted to mention uh, Southern Lit Alliance is having poetry workshops, a series of four sessions on writing poetry and editing. Um, and if you also want to just check out our website, I have about 
um, six authors that will come in between now and June. The first one is John Cribb, who wrote a book of, called Old Abe about Abraham Lincoln's um, last four years. It's a fiction. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, the Chattanooga Boys Choir will not be having a Guns N' Roses tribute concert. Um, I think we just enjoyed that today. Um, but we are, uh, we just started up our online virtual rehearsals after a really busy holiday season and we have two virtual choir releases coming up by mid-February. Uh, one of uh, Resilience, which I think is is one that's an anthem for all of us perhaps uh, here in these current times. Um, and then we're really uh, proud to be partnering with the Jewish Federation of Greater Chattanooga in their observance of Yom HaShoah, which of course is the uh, official observance of the Holocaust. Um, in the calendar. So we'll be um, working with them in that project as well as we move through these virtual times after rehearsing in baseball stadiums and football stadiums for the last several months. But it's good to see you. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Thanks and feel free to pop those um, programs that you guys are all mentioning in the chat box as well. Links to okay. those. Um, I'm Jim Veenster with Sound of Tennessee men's a cappella chorus in Cleveland, Tennessee. And we're on February 2nd, we are having a live uh, guest night at the Museum Center at Five Points. From seven to 8.30, masks are required, we'll be 10 feet or more distant from each other, but it's a wonderful opportunity to actually do some singing together. If anybody's interested, info at soundof10.org info at soundof10.org. Thank you. I'm going to give a shout, shout out to Stratton for uh, about bandwidth program. And we'll call him out to talk, tell everyone about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, Soundcore has been running a um, new live streaming program that helps local bands to connect with online audiences. We have a ton of sessions coming up. Um, our goal is to, well, we, we, have, we have some really big goals um, and it's going pretty well so far. So. If you don't already, uh, follow us on Facebook and you will see those streams there. We'll get it all uh, organized on a single web page here in a few. But um, yeah, it's been really fun. Uh, I just want to give a verbal shout out that Arts Vote Chattanooga Lunch and Learn is at the top of the hour at noon. Uh, I'm going to do my best to moderate this thing, so y'all bear with me. <laughs> Monica graciously asked me, and I was like, yeah, okay. So um, please come and show up for this. I think it's so important. Uh, even if, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. Even if you don't know who this guy is, you're going to find out who he is. And, you know, maybe he'll be mayor. Maybe he'll be dog catcher. But we want him to know that the arts count, you know. They got to, so we got to just represent. Just show up you know, get in there. So he goes, oh crap, there's a lot of people that would vote for me that uh, need that art support. So we really need you guys to tune in. I hope you can make it. You can even turn your camera off and make a sandwich. I don't care. Just come on and listen, pull up a chair, okay? Thanks. And that folks is exactly why I asked Kate Warren to be a moderator, because <laughs> she's great. <laughs> I'm excited to hear you moderate, Kate. Y'all should be worried, folks. <laughs> hey, we're 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 ticking off all the candidates. You know, there's a lot of candidates, so we're we've got like three more. If they return phone calls, we'll keep doing it. <laughs> so so we've had a we've been very lucky to have a lot of good moderators and a lot of good questions about the arts. And and I really do think that these candidates have learned a lot about the arts. Um, you know, from these uh, sessions as well. So I think it's I think it's helping. I hope. I agree. Well, if there aren't 
any other announcements, um, we will see you all hopefully again um, this afternoon and then for this meeting again next month. Um, and as I said, if you have any um, ideas or suggestions or if you would like to come on and present something, please feel free to reach out to ArtsBuild. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning and I hope you guys all have a great weekend and it's great to see your lovely faces again. Bye.